This is your Sober Professor and in today's class we will be discussing how you can get sober in just one day where I will be sharing my top 5 secrets that helped me to get sober. If you find this content helpful, make sure that you like this video, click that subscribe button and hit that bell so you can receive notifications. Now put on your thinking cap, make sure to take notes and let this class begin. Welcome to Sober Life University, a digital university where we discuss all things sober. Today's topic, how to get sober in just one day. Well, you know, there is no real secret. The reality is that sobriety is a daily practice, so you actually have to get sober every single day. Each day has its own challenges, and for those of us that develop an addiction, we have to unlearn the many unhealthy coping patterns and mechanisms that we've learned during our drinking, and that process takes time. Sobriety is a lifelong journey of self-discovery and personal growth. The following five tips are things that helped me as I was first getting sober. Number one, taking things one day at a time. When I realized that my drinking was a problem, the thought of quitting was extremely daunting. I didn't want to part ways with the substance that had given me comfort for many years nor let go of my party lifestyle. The thought of letting that go forever and not drinking ever again, it didn't sit well with me. Hearing about people who had many years of sobriety, I thought, well, I could never do that. A common phrase in the recovery community is the phrase, one day at a time. Instead of thinking about how long I would have to go without drinking, I learned how to stay focused on just how to stay sober today. There is no point in worrying about tomorrow for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. I learned from people that had 10 or 20 plus years of sobriety saying things like, I don't know if I'll drink tomorrow, but I just know that I won't drink today. And hearing that helped me not worry so much about the future and just focus on getting sober for one day, one day at a time. As of the time of this video, I'm going on nearly four years without drinking. And by God's grace, I have no desire to go drinking again. I certainly hope that I can stay sober for the rest of my life. And the cravings that I once had when I was first getting sober have been gone for years. I don't know if any of those cravings will come back or if I'll have any triggers that will push me to want to drink again. But today I've managed to stay sober and I won't worry about managing to stay sober again until tomorrow. Number two, change your surroundings. The key to changing any type of unwanted behavior is to change things that will help you disrupt that pattern. This may mean having to change the people, places, and things around you that may cause you to drink. That may mean having to stop hanging out with people that only encourage your drinking or going to places like bars and nightclubs and getting rid of alcohol around your home. The saying, if you hang out in the barbershop long enough, you'll eventually get a haircut, is a saying that is common in the recovery community. Meaning, if you spend enough time hanging around alcohol, you'll eventually want to keep drinking. In order to quit drinking, we need to limit our exposure to alcohol and find healthier alternatives. This is one of the benefits of pursuing a sober life, that you get to venture into new hobbies and meet new friends that are not centered around drinking. When I first got sober, I didn't know what to do with my free time as most of my time was either spent at a bar or drinking at home. I went on a journey of self-discovery as I tried many different hobbies from joining local workout groups, painting, home improvement projects, gardening, cooking, and many other things. Doing these things allowed me to stay busy and keep my mind off of wanting to drink. I started to be more self-aware of the things that I was listening and watching online and started to use the algorithm to my advantage. Instead of following pages that glamorize drinking and the party lifestyle, I started following pages from motivational speakers and personal development coaches. The recommended features started recommending entrepreneurship pages and I developed a passion and hunger to learn about business that has led me to start three different companies. This new hobby has kept my mind off of alcohol as I stay so focused on my business and seeing my vision come to life. I recommend that you find a hobby or skill that you've always wanted to learn. Follow pages and channels and connect with people online around these hobbies and start using that algorithm to your advantage. Number three, find sober pals. We've all heard the phrase, tell me who your friends are and I'll tell you who you are. When I was actively drinking, I didn't think I had a problem because well, all of my friends drank. So when I tried to get sober, it was difficult for my friends to try to understand why I wasn't drinking. I had to work through the peer pressure of, come on, you can have just one. 
where that one would turn to three, then five, and sometimes up to 10 in one night. When I really got serious about getting sober, I only told a handful of friends that I had a problem with drinking. Those friends that truly cared were extremely supportive and they helped me stay accountable by cutting our bar nights and doing non-alcohol related activities. I met new sober friends online and in person where we shared our common struggles and we encouraged one another to stay sober through new hobbies. I learned from people that had years of sobriety and eventually I started sharing my experience with those in early recovery, sharing my experience getting through my first 30 and 90 days and encouraging them to keep going just as people had encouraged me in my early sobriety. When I had my first sober anniversary, the only people that understood the excitement and how much of an accomplishment that was for somebody like me were those that were also in recovery. I formed some of the most beautiful and meaningful relationships with people in recovery. There are free recovery programs, support groups, and meetings that take place across the world where people meet both virtually and in person. I encourage you to look at your local community resources and find a group that's close to you so you can connect with others. You can also find virtual communities online and the community forum of this channel is an excellent opportunity to connect with others who are also on this journey of sobriety. Number four, healing your trauma. Alcoholism and addiction is typically a result of a deeper rooted issue. This typically stems from stress, trauma, or other emotional pain and discomfort. This emotional distress can lead us to turn to the bottle, to try to find a sense of relief by trying to escape and forget and numbing the pain. It's not until one truly works on identifying and healing those wounds that one begins to experience not only the benefits of physical sobriety, but also emotional sobriety. It wasn't until I stopped drinking that I started to understand what I was running away from. I was carrying years of significant trauma that I had learned how to escape and suppress by drinking. It wasn't until I started getting sober that I got the mental clarity to begin my healing journey. Memories of traumatic events started coming back and I had to learn how to face them while sober. I learned how to sit in those feelings and emotions and learn coping mechanisms to deal with them in a healthy manner. Through sobriety, I learned how to allow myself to cry and acknowledge the pain and the hurt that I was carrying. I learned that the healing journey isn't a linear one but rather a cyclical one, with anniversaries of traumatic events being particularly heavy. As I've developed more self-awareness, I'm cognizant when anniversaries of traumatic events are coming up. During those times, I don't take on any new projects, and I give myself the time and space that I need to heal. Whether that be crying, mourning, healing, or whatever it is that my body needs to deal with those heavy emotions. My favorite practice in my healing journey is to sit on the couch with calming music or ocean sounds and asking God to heal those wounds in my soul and the suppressed trauma. Sometimes I end up crying on my couch for hours and I've learned to be okay with that as I feel a huge burden being lifted off my shoulders as I release those emotions with a good cry. No two healing journeys are the same. And I encourage you to do some self-reflection and identifying what it is that you need to heal from. Identify what works for you. Whether that's talking to a friend or relative, attending therapy or recovery, or finding that quiet time with God and letting Him lead you. And number five, practicing self-compassion. Sobriety is a lifelong journey and no two journeys are the same. The important thing is that you're doing something about it and you have that desire to change. We didn't get to the point of addiction overnight and recovery takes patience and time. We need to learn how to be compassionate about recovery recognizing that no sobriety is perfect and we're all a work in progress. Acknowledge the bravery and courage that you have by seeking help and wanting to renew your life. If you have gone through a traumatic experience as most alcoholics and addicts have gone through, know that you're not alone. You don't have to go through the pain alone. And there are many of us throughout the world that have gone through something similar. We heal and we get stronger together. For many of us in recovery, relapse has also been a part of our journey. After nearly 18 months of sobriety, I went through a series of life events where unfortunately I ended up relapsing. I felt ashamed that I had lost that much time, yet I stayed connected with the recovery community that encouraged me to get back on track. I've heard the analogy of comparing sobriety to a road trip. If you're going from California to Florida and you get a flat tire in Arizona, you don't start in California all over again. You find a way to fix that tire and you get back on the road. Although I hit a roadblock in my sobriety, I recognized the progress I had made over those 18 months and it wasn't completely time lost. 
I learn how to pick up the pieces and ask for help as I fix my tire and get back on the road to sobriety. I'm now going on four years without a drink since my relapse. Know that what you are doing is brave and it takes courage to even search videos such as these and truly start to desire that change. I believe in you and I hope that you believe in yourself too. In closing, here is a recap of today's lesson. My five secrets to get sober in a day are taking things one day at a time, changing your setting, finding sober pals, healing your trauma, and practicing self-compassion. Comment below and let me know what tips you found helpful or any other tips that you've used to get sober. If you found this video helpful and you think it could benefit others, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up and click that subscribe button. This helps YouTube promote this video to others. Make sure to check out the community section and be on the lookout for the upcoming season, Friday Night Live, where I'll be going live with special guests and we'll be talking about all things sober. To make sure you receive notifications, go ahead and click that bell icon below. Until next class, The Sober Professor, signing off.